the blue stuff. Make the cell like we tell you. If you do this, you'll have an awesome cell when you're finished, and the cost can be less than $100 with all the wire. What you see here costs less than $20 to build. Now, it does take several hours to put all this stuff together, and time is money. So, I figure I've got about a billion dollars in this fuel cell. We spent over three years working very hard to make sure this system works properly. On top of this dryer, you put this putty on just like this. If it gets really hot, it will actually melt away, cause a leak, and, well, that's far more acceptable than catching fire. So the putty, just like this. If it's exceeding the temperature of this putty, there's something wrong anyway, and you need to check your system. So this putty can act as an indicator to how hot your cell is actually getting as well. The putty will get very tacky at the high temperatures, but it will not flow into the cell and it won't melt away or cause a leak. As long as you're in the right temperature threshold. When the vacuum is applied, the stuff will self-heal in the smallest of holes. Now in the vacuum pressure fuel cell, we only use baking soda as an electrolyte. Other fuel cells on the internet are using lye. This fuel cell uses baking soda and the byproduct, which is an iron particle, which looks a lot like orange mud in the fuel cell is very important. I really recommend that you use Arm & Hammer baking soda because nothing else is as pure. Other sodas will foam. And the amount of soda that you use is also very important. We're not just using baking soda as an electrolyte. We have an anode, which will self-destruct and will add to the alkaline process. We add about one to three grams of baking soda. We usually use about this much. Give you a size reference here. It's about the size of a quarter there, you see right there. This is about how much baking soda you're gonna put inside the fuel cell. Now in winter, you can add up to three pieces this size. Now that's a pretty good measurement for you. Okay, this photon injection system is very powerful. At certain wavelengths, the atoms will absorb energy. And if those wavelengths are outside the thresholds of those energy gates or bands, then the photons are just bounced off in most cases. However, in this vacuum chamber, we have superheat gas taking place. In other words, the atoms are moving toward cold. So the very hot, hot photons will move toward the much cooler gas. The cooler gas will take on the energy, if not in the photon state, then in the superheat state, just like Freon in a refrigerator. This much hotter gas has a much higher electron voltage. It has more pop. It has more bang. And when it goes into your engine, it is extremely dry in the vacuum state. Now this bulb can be purchased usually for about $5. This is one of the most inexpensive xenon bulbs that you can buy. Please use this exact type. It's 55 watts DC, 12 volts. Using this photon injection heating system on your HHO vacuum pressure fuel cell can increase the performance tremendously, especially on your low end takeoff and engine idling. You won't believe how smooth your engine will idle with this hot, warm hydrogen oxygen gas entering into the fuel system, creating a super efficient burn that will give you more miles per gallon without violating the laws of thermodynamics. You can't get more power out than you put in, they say. And we believe this, but we believe that we can make this gas so efficiently, it will actually improve our miles per gallon. We've proven this over three years of rigorous testing and work on the vacuum pressure fuel cell. We don't sell this fuel cell. We just tell you how to build it. Please watch all of the videos here on CerseiPress.com and you'll learn just how to build this cell. Things that have changed, like the larger jar, the larger clips, and the photon dryer can all be found in the forum. So if you're interested in building a vacuum pressure fuel cell, join our forum. That way you can be current with anything new that we're doing. Please be very careful. 
You accept all liability for what you're doing. Using a photon injection system in a vacuum is extremely safe. But if you don't have the vacuum that you need, you can produce a fire. Please be careful. This is the average production at around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The water will change over the course of a thousand miles. We do not add any water to the vacuum pressure fuel cell because we won't have to. It won't freeze down to 12 degrees Fahrenheit. This water will break in over the course of a thousand miles. When it's ready to change, our anode will be completely destroyed except for the fragments which we've showed you in the video. Well, I've run out of time and I've said all I can say. There's much more information in our older videos and we hope that this information will help you understand the vacuum pressure fuel cell, the concepts of paramagnetism, quantum mechanics, and thermodynamics. Thanks for watching CerseiPress.com.